In the first round of the simulation, you must manage the pricing for all six of your products, for each of the two customer types. You must also make decisions about your marketing spending. You can adjust both of these at any point during the simulation. To make your decision, you will need to know how to operate the corresponding transactions in SAP and will need information on which to base those decisions. Let's now turn to the SAP system to learn how to run the relevant reports and operational transactions. As we start to explore the system, don't be concerned that you will forget the steps to complete any operation. You've been provided with a two-page job aid to assist you. The front page of the job aid is mapped to an overview of the business process and color-coded to give you the context to find what you're looking for. If you have not already done so, obtain the job aid and keep it near you so you can orient yourself between it and the system as we go. This will make it easier for you to find what you need later on. The second page of the job aid contains information about your products, customers, and suppliers, most of which we've already discussed. By the end of this series of videos, we will have seen and discussed all the transactions on the job aid. We will explore the relevance of each of these in their context in the business cycle as we need to. Take a look at your job aid. The transactions for round one can all be found to the right in the area marked sales process. Each time a simulation event is run, an SAP environment is assigned for that event, and each team of participants is assigned one of 26 companies available, designated by the letters A through Z. Within those teams, each person is assigned a unique user account, designated by the numbers 1 through 9, with associated username and password. This information is vital, as without access to the environment, you cannot participate. The general format of these is also documented on the job aid, as a reminder. In the context of the manufacturing intro sim, the general form of the username is as you see it before you and as it appears on the job aid. You must substitute the dollar sign for your team letter, in our example A, and the pound sign for your user number, in our example 3. The password for each event is also on the job aid and it is case sensitive, which means you must type it exactly as it appears. The SAP environment will also be assigned to you. There is nothing to substitute here. Simply use these as provided. For the purpose of this training, we will demonstrate everything as though you were assigned Team A, User 1, using Client 300. Keep in mind that when it comes time for you to practice, or more importantly, if you have already been assigned a practice environment, you must substitute Team Letter A and User Number 1 with those that you have actually been assigned and use the SAP server and client assigned to you. Time to get hands-on. Let's log in. First, we start the SAP application. Select the correct server and click on Login. At the main login page, you must enter the details of the user account and environment that you have been assigned. In addition to selecting the SAP server that we will use, SAP uses a concept called a client, which is a virtual partitioning of one server into independent environments. Each simulation uses a specific SAP client. We can run multiple simulations by using different clients instead of needing to have many SAP servers. Enter the client, your username and password. Remember, if you have a practice environment and are following along while you watch this video, don't copy the examples you see here. Use the team, user, and SAP environment that you've been assigned. At first login, you may be prompted to change the default password with a permanent one. In that case, select something carefully and write it down. If you forget it, you won't be able to log in in the future. Once you've confirmed the password, it will be permanent and you are now connected to SAP. While unfamiliar to most people the first time they use it, the SAP interface is not difficult to learn. There are some key basic skills to learn and the rest from there becomes easy with a little practice. Let's learn about the first two we have just seen. In SAP, when you want to confirm something, we click on the Enter or Confirm icon. This can appear in two forms, depending on the context. The first icon we use to confirm our login details. The second icon we use to confirm the new password. Whenever you see either of these icons, clicking on them will confirm your actions or proceed to the next step. These are synonymous with hitting the Enter key. If we don't want to confirm our action and cancellation is possible, we would see a third icon. This icon is used to cancel an action we no longer want to perform. We will now spend some time getting comfortable with the SAP interface. Gaining confidence in this area quickly is important, as we want to be focusing on the business decisions we are going to make, not fumbling around trying to remember where everything is. 
There are two basic ways to get started in SAP. Both approaches accomplish an action referred to as running a transaction. A transaction is simply an operation or report that we would like to use or look at. We can run transactions from the user menu or using its transaction code, also known as its technical name. For new users, the user menu is the easiest way to find and run a transaction. The SAP menu contains a set of transactions that the user has access to, typically grouped together in folders by purpose, business context, or some other classification. We've grouped the transactions together in the order that you will learn them to make each one easier to find. Let's begin by first running a simple report. We know that we will begin the simulation with starting inventory of finished products. As you sell off this inventory, you will want to monitor how much you still have left. We can run the inventory report to give us this information. Drill down into the menu, find the inventory report, and double click on it to run it. Notice that to expand or drill down into the folders in the menu, we clicked on the small triangle icon. Wherever you see this icon, you can click on it to see more detail or child items. To hide or collapse that detail, simply click on the icon again. The inventory report contains the list of all your products and how many units you currently have left in your stock. In SAP terminology, your products are referred to as materials and referenced by a material code. There's also a description of the product so you can tell which one it is. The material code is prefixed with your team letter, repeated twice. This report also has information about your warehouse storage capacity and total inventory. Since there is no warehousing capacity or cost in the manufacturing intro sim, you can ignore this part of the report. In SAP, reports are always up to date when you first run them, but once run, they do not update automatically. Most of the reports have a refresh button. Whenever you see this icon, click on it to request that the data in the report be refreshed. Of course, this will only have an effect while the simulation is actually running. When the simulation is paused, time is effectively standing still, so you will see no change. On most of the reports, the report heading will also show you how old the information is. Basically, when the report was last run. This is reported in terms of how the simulation measures time. It is also a useful way to track what day it is in the simulation. Refresh a report and you will immediately see what the current simulation day is. Note that the simulation reports time in quarters and days. A quarter is synonymous with one round of the sim. Refer back to your job aid. Find the box marked stock levels. Inside it, you will see Inventory Report, followed by the characters ZMB52. ZMB52 is the technical name for the inventory report. There are no steps to complete to run the inventory report, so the information on the job aid is a reminder of the purpose or information content of the report. There is another report that we will find very useful during the first round of the simulation, the Summary Sales Report. With the help of the job aid, we discover that its technical name is ZVC2. The technical name can also be used to run a transaction. On the SAP toolbar, to the right of the Enter icon, is a drop-down control. You can type the technical name into this space and click on the Enter icon to run the relevant transaction. Despite the ease with which we can run a transaction if we know the technical name, SAP will not allow you to run a new transaction while you still have another open. You must first return to the user menu before you can run another transaction. The Summary Sales Report contains a day-by-day -day product level summary of the sales orders you've received from your customers, specifically the number of separate orders you've received, the total units ordered, and revenue value. There are two other sales reports. Can you find them on the job aid? You're free to explore these during the first round of the simulation, but we will discuss the information available in each of these after the first round is complete. Their use will be more transparent once we've received some orders and there's data to be seen. Note that the green back icon was used to return to the user menu the first time, but the yellow exit icon was used the second time. There is a third red cancel icon grouped with these two. The behavior of these icons varies from transaction to transaction, but in general, the simpler the transaction, the more likely two of the icons will have the same function. In general, 
Use the green back icon to go back to the previous screen in a transaction. Use the yellow exit icon to exit the transaction and return to the user menu. When you are at the user menu, this icon is also used to exit or log out of the SAP system. Use the red icon to cancel what you are doing in a transaction. This is more common in response to a system error message. There are general guidelines for when to use these three icons, but be aware that they are the icons with the most inconsistent behavior from transaction to transaction in the SAP system. Don't worry, you'll quickly learn the handful of transactions with specific behaviors outside the general guidelines.